So for my third interaction, I sat in on a few of Spencer's classes. One of them was his lab class, and one of them was his German class. And going into this, I was very concerned about I was going to be incredibly confused and have no idea about any of the material, and was just going to feel kind of stupid. I knew I'd be alright in the German class because I've taken a few years of German, but I was very concerned about his lab class because I have never been a science person. And Spencer didn't really pay much attention to me throughout the interaction. He was just kind of like, oh, you're here, and he kind of did his thing, and I was just kind of sitting there and watching him do his thing, which I guess counts as doing my thing. And so the biggest thing I realized is that people in other things than music, it is still incredibly challenging in just in a very different way. I mean, some of that science stuff made no sense to me the way I'm sure that my music theory class would make no sense to Spencer. I also learned that some of the other classes are almost as intense as the practice and workload that I have. You know, they require a lot of work, both in and out of the class. And, you know, I knew everybody's got their fair share of work they have to do, but I didn't realize that it was almost equivalent to the amount I'm expected to practice. And I learned that people who aren't music people, they really do have it pretty hard. Just kind of a different type of hard. So I guess what I'd really like to learn the most about is more in-depth exploration of what it's like to not be a music person. I mean, I've never been anything but a music person, you know. I would love to visit, you know, even though I have no clue what's going on, like a 400-level math or science class or something along those lines, or see a day in the life of a graduate student in that field or somebody whose career was in that field. And I am also definitely very interested in learning a lot more about the college application process for someone who is not a music major. You know, what kinds of things did you think you needed to have, like, I knew going into college applications that I needed to have a lot of ensembles and leadership from within the band and within my other musical groups and just a lot of music-related activities. But I want to know, you know, what kinds of things you thought a non-music major thought they needed to have on their college applications, you know, as well as just kind of what it was like to just you know, you know you got into a college and that was it. You know, you didn't have to worry about, oh, am I going to get into the College of Music and, you know, not having to submit two separate college applications. And also, what high school class selection process went into, you know, what the process was for how you decided what classes you were going to take in high school because, you know, I was just like, oh, I'm going to load up on music classes as much as possible. You know, how people decided which science or math or whatever kind of classes they needed to make them a competitive applicant with in their field. So I also, I thought it was very interesting that there was, didn't seem to be, you know, None of the students seem to know each other as well, you know. Within the music community, you kind of travel with the same small group of people almost forever. And, you know, these were all just... Some of these people were just taking this class as a gen ed. Some people were taking this because it was part of their major. It was very interesting to see a group of people who, you know, none of them really knew each other very well. And, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I have this class and this class and this class with you. It was like... I just have this one class with you, and other than that, I don't know much about your life. You know, in the College of Music, we all have all of our classes together. We all know a lot about each other's lives. So I think that aspect was what was the most interesting for me.